state is nice, but it almost removes you from Nebraska. Whereas when uh, on Highway 30 or the Lincoln Highway, you went through every little town and you got to see what, what was going on in the countryside much better. If you owned a car in the early 1900s, good luck finding a road to drive on. You could follow the old wagon trails, but a little rain turned those roads to mud. In September 1912, an Indiana man named Carl Graham Fisher imagined the future, a transcontinental highway paved with concrete. He knew he couldn't do it alone, so he enlisted the support of local businesses and communities along the route. And then the cement companies pitched in with something called seedling miles. Cement companies donated the cement and local people helped make this seedling mile to make people realize how great it would be if we had a hard surface road coast to coast. The idea was that if people actually had the experience of driving on a paved road and saw the difference between mud or gravel or dirt and sailing smoothly along concrete, they would clamor for more concrete. And it worked, obviously it worked. Most of it was done with horses. The pavement on Highway 30, and I can remember the original highway, each lane was only eight foot wide, so it was a comparatively narrow road. On November 3rd, 1915, Grand Island became the second city on the route and the first in Nebraska to complete a seedling mile. Two weeks later came Kearney. Not every community used concrete, Elkhorn, Nebraska, has the longest stretch of original brick along the Lincoln Highway. Built in the 1920s, this section of highway is listed on the National Register of Historic Places. Soon after, gas stations, motels, and diners began springing up along the brand new highway. Places like Shady Bend, just outside Grand Island. It was called the motel, but there were the units back there, and that was a pretty, pretty big deal, but it also was a gas station. And like I said, the grocery store, I think that there just weren't places to stop. And so either you had to go to a large city that had a hotel or sleep in a car or whatever. It was really a big deal back in those days to be connected with the Lincoln Highway. Uh, there was Lincoln Highway cigar manufacturers, there was Lincoln Highway tires, there was Lincoln Highway oil, and everybody kind of wanted to get in on the act. In the 1920s, the federal government began using numbers to designate highways. The Lincoln Highway became Highway 30, and some of the magic went away. In the late 20s was when the federal government uh, designated it as a, a number, Highway 30, rather than the Lincoln Highway. It kind of lost its identity when they uh, gave it the number. When it comes to the Lincoln Highway and, and preserving it, you'll find more enthusiasm for local people to put up plaques in their particular little area than you will uh, border to border. The heyday of the Lincoln Highway lasted until the 1960s, when the interstate was built just parallel to the old highway. When the interstate went through, then you, we saw a marked decline in, in the, the traffic, uh, that it just was not there and everybody traveled the interstate. The interstate, it's just a business route. And so that's why, to me, it doesn't seem like that's really what Nebraska is. I mean, you drive down Highway 30 here locally and compare what you see from Highway 30 to what you see on the interstate, it's two different worlds.